welcome back to my channel. So in today's part we are going to be working on our Australian Shepherd's nose. Um, we'll see if we can, how far we get, whether we get some of the fur in, but definitely be working on the nose itself. Any questions, don't forget you can leave them down below and I will get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. So I'm going to start off with my uh, dark sepia and obviously we've got some pink areas on this nose. We're going to sort of go around them, ignore those areas at first, add in our darkest areas and then come back to the pink. So I'm just going to start off by just mapping in the shape of the nose itself, some of these darker areas. Just being careful where I place my pigment because we are going to be using our pinks. You see I'm just mapping in like the shapes of the nostrils is exactly what I'm just mapping in at the moment and then I'm going around any of those pink areas so we've got a darker outline but here you can see I've not gone around the edges because it's going to be quite pinkish there there's the top of the nose there Okay, so that's the general shape of our nose. So we need to start really building it up. So I'm going to start off first of all by uh, applying a base layer and I'm going to go in with my warm grey wool. And I'm just going to apply this as my base layer across the bottom of this nose. Well, across the all of the nose where we've got these darks, basically. So it's going to act as a nice base layer. And across the top of this nose. Okay, and then I'm going to take my dark sepia again and I'm just going to come in where we've got those really dark darks and just start building up the layers. So I'm going to increase my pressure. You can see I'm just starting to follow the shape of the nose as well, it's starting to curve around where I can. So looking here, this is quite dark in here, so I'm going to increase my pressure. Remember, it's curving into the nostril, so we're curving our pencil strokes. We want that fruity effect to our nose. I 
like so. Now I'm going to take my paint grey. Very light pressure at the moment. We're just building up some colour. And again, I'm just following the shape of this nose. And I'm just going to do on the top of this nose because it looks a little smoother. I'm going to do circular motions with my pencil. Now, obviously, I you can see I'm really picking up the texture of this paper. Uh, don't worry if you're not. Mine might not look as smooth as I would normally like, but that's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to take my warm grey free, and this is where we're going to start building up some of the colour and details a lot more. So I'm just going to set, take my warm grey free and as you take your warm grey free you'll see it'll start kind of blending and just smoothing everything out nicely. It's also going to knock back that blue tone ever so slightly of the Payne's grey. Now obviously we use the Payne's grey very lightly so we will be going back over but I'm just going to start to smooth out the nose. And you can see we're starting to get an almost 3D look to our nose already. I'm going to take my uh, kaput mortem now so I can see these pinkish brownish tones in the nose. So again, I'm just going to come in with the kaput mortem. Nice light pressure. I'm not pressing hard. And I'm just going to add this in where I can see them. I'm doing lines, curved lines for the bottom of the nose because it's we want it to be curving out and around. And on this area, it's more circular motions. So your pencil strokes, it's all like we do with the fur, with short pencil strokes for short fur, long pencil strokes for short fur. Same thing with noses. Your pencil strokes are going to help you build up that nose. And then I'm going to take my Payne's Grey again. And I'm just increasing my pressure now with this Payne's Grey. We're going to start to really build up the nose. In there now. Just going to take my dark sepia again. I'm just going to darken up some of these areas. So I'm really pressing where I want some nice dark tones. Especially in that nostril area. And then I'm just going to use lighter pressure over the top of the rest of that nose. Again, it's just adding depth and more detail to the nose itself. And then taking the Cold Grey 5.
over the top and then I'm going to take my warm grey free again harder pressure and again just coming in and starting to really smooth out these layers Okay, so now I'm going to take my black and this is where we're going to really see the definition start to appear. So I've got a really dark area here in this nose and you're going to press quite hard and then lessen your pressure as you're blending outwards. And then back to my dark sepia and just helping get a nice blend with this nose. Going back to my Payne's Grey as well. over the top there okay so we need to bring in our pink tones so we're going to use our beige red as our base layer and I'm doing it on both sides And lighter pressure there with a bit pink blending outwards. Okay, so I'm going to take my red violet first of all, and we're going to use this as our deepest colour. So, where we've got that shadow in the deepest part of the nostril, I'm going to bring that red violet in there and blend that outwards. And I'm doing the same here. And then over the top of that red violet, I'm going to take the Caput Martin. And then we're going to take our cinnamon. And then back over with the beige red. And then we've got a little dark spot on this part of the nose, so I'm just coming in with the Payne's Grey. And adding that. So there is our nose. I'm just going to take my warm grey one. It hasn't actually taken as long. I keep forgetting this is quite a small piece, so it won't take us too long. Just going over this with a long grey one. It'll help blend. Actually, I'm going to get my slice tool as well. And I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of a highlight on the bottom of this nose. Very lightly. Like so. Right, so let's get some of this fur in. So I'm going to take our warm grey one and I'm going to come around the bottom of this nose first of all. 
I want to get these really dark details mapped in before I do any of the lighter areas. Just going to get my putty eraser and lift some of this graphite. So one grey one is the base layer. At the moment I've just followed kind of the shape where that darker fur is so that I know kind of where obviously that little darker grey tones are. Just going to do it on the other side as well, lifting the graphite. Okay, so first of all, I am going to bring in some of the brown shades I can see in this area. So I'm going to take my Van Dyke brown. Now we're not going to uh, press hard, so no hard pressure, nice light pressure as we build up the textures, uh, the colours, sorry. We will be using the slice tool as usual on this piece to really build in the texture so we're building colors adding texture at the end and I'm also being aware that on this side of the face on the left hand side that there's a bit more of a pinker area to be seen so I'm going to make sure that we've left space for that to be added Okay, so then I'm going to take my um, cinnamon to add in that pink fleshy tone. Again, nice light pressure, I'm not pressing too hard. And we've got it down on this side as well and coming up. Taking the beige red, just going over that cinnamon. Bit of a harder pressure. We want this to be nice and pink. Okay, I'm then going to take my burnt umber and just go over the Van Dyke brown area, leaving gaps, I'm not covering the whole area. But again, it's just about adding layers. Okay, so then I'm going to take my, oops, Paul Grey 5. And again, we're going over that with the Cold Grey 5. And you can see I've gone right up to the nose. There's no white halo around the nose. Going right up there. So don't be afraid to even overlap. So my colours have been going into that darker bottom area of the nose and coming down so that it's overlapping and just blending in this area and then we're going to take our dark sepia and this is where I'm just kind of going to come right down from the nose so you'll see that this just makes it look blended you're getting little bits of fur from that nose The same on this side. Okay, and then I'm going to just take my Payne's Grey, bring in those blue tones that we can see, mainly over the top of that dark sepia. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, beige red 
just over that pink tone again blend into those colors that we've added and on this side and then we're going to take our one gray free over the top of the darker areas and just blend like so right so before we bring in any more details we're going to bring in the rest of the white fur and then we can come in with our slice tool so i'm going to take my warm gray one and we're going to start with this side of the face i'm just going to lift that graphite so i'm just focusing on the white fur at the moment we just want the muzzle kind of mo most of the muzzle drawn in obviously there is some tan fur to draw so we're just focusing on the white fur Okay, as we come higher up here, I'm just going to blend out the white, the warm grey one, so lighter pressure. You can see the difference between the pressure, harder pressure here, lighter pressure there. And then I'm going to take my cold grey one, and then I'm going to take my cold grey one, again light pressure over the top. And I'm blending in with that warm grey one. Nice light pressure. And then I'm going to use the cold grey one on this side of the face. So this, the left hand side is in shadow, which is why we've gone for the warm grey tones. And the um, right hand side is in the highlighted area so I'm going for the cold grey one because I can go over that with a white and it will be really nice and light in tonal value okay, and I'm just blending over some of that warm grey area Okay, so I'm then going to take my ivory and again, very light pressure with the ivory over this cold grey one. I'm not pressing hard at all. So you can barely see these two colours really. And I'm going to bring that ivory in over this warm grey one area as well. I'm going to bring in a lot of detail on this side soon. There's more detail on the left hand side than there is the right hand side. And then my white, I just need to clean it. And then I'm going to use nice hard pressure with my white. Mainly over this cold grey one area. Now this area will stand out a lot more once we start bringing in the tanned fur and all the other colours that are going on. But already you should see that you've got that difference between the colour of your paper if you're using an extra white or a white paper uh, even the traditional paper in the Fabriano you should still see that difference in colours so you can see on the camera here you've got the paper colour and then you've got the white fur you can see that there is that tonal difference but it's still looking like white fur <laughs> right I'm just going to take my warm grey free now so I'm just going to Bring this along here. And then my dark sepia. And then the beige red. And then I'm just going to go over that again with the white. Okay, 
think so okay so this side of the base i'm going to take my beige red so we're going to start off with the beige red and we're just going to follow nice and lightly the shapes that we can see Okay, I'm going to take my warm grey too, and then I'm going over again, just building up that detail. And on this side as well, I can see the one way too. I'm just going to take my cobra one here. And then my uh, cobra five. My cinnamon now. And then I'm going to take my warm grey one again. Nice hard pressure right over the top. Cobra one and the white. Hard pressure with the white because we're burnishing now, so we want all this pigment to blend and be pushed right into the tooth of the paper. Just taking that beige red and I'm just going to blend that up the nose. Like so. Okay, then taking my uh, warm grey one again. And we're just going to map in this darker part of the lip. So just applying this warm grey one as a base layer, nice hard pressure. And then I'm going to go straight in with my dark sepia. And I'm going to push underneath that fur. So pushing underneath the fur because this lower lip is, is below the uh, top area that we've already drawn, drawn in. And we will use the slice tool, as I've mentioned, to really define this area. <sighs> okay. And then back to my warm grey one. Just going to lift this graphite. We want to create this lower jaw. So nice hard pressure as we apply this as a base layer. Okay, 
And I'm going to take my cinnamon very, very lightly, glaze over the top of that warm grey warm. So when I say glaze, very light pressure, so that your colour's just touching the paper. You can barely see that on my camera, and that's kind of how you want it to be. And then my beige red, again, just that glaze, so very light pressure. I'm going to take my Payne's Grey and bring some of that detail and the dark sepia and then we're going to take our one grey too go over the top of all of this bottom jaw And I'm just going to take my white as well, just to help burnish, really push that pigment into the paper. Plus it's another layer for the slice tool. Going back in here with this dark sepia, again I'm building up this layer so that I can get that slice tool working. You can see the black as well. Okay, so the slice tool. We're going to start adding details with the slice tool. So I'm just going to follow the fur direction and just bring in details. Overlap that bottom jaw. You can see I'm just taking away that top layer and it's just adding that detail. I think so. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my warm grey free, nice and sharp. I'm going to come in on here. And I'm just adding in a few little more details on this white area of fur. Okay. So we can start sorting out the markings as well. So I'm just going to take my cold grey one again, add this in here, and then I'm going to take my cold grey five, and I'm just going to follow the shape of this darker marking and build up the layers here. Paints grey. And then I'm going back over that again with the cold grey warm. And then my slice tool to bring in those details. So, okay, so I'm going to add in um, some of this fur on the side of this head. We're going to start bringing in the fur on the left hand side to come over to the right hand side. Probably won't get it all done, um, but we can make a start. So, I'm going to start with a warm grey one. It's all base layer. And I'm just doing it where we've got that darker patch of grey fur. Just 
I'm just going to lift that graphite. Okay, so that was the warm grey one. I'm going to go over that with a cold grey one. So I want a nice neutral grey. So, okay. So as I'm looking in here, I can see some nice brown tones and some pink tones. So I'm going to take my um, cinnamon and I'm just going to bring in this cinnamon, mainly on this edge where it's going to blend into the tan fur, but also a little bit on the edge as well. And the beige red. Light pressure, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just going to cover that lightly, just adding a layer in there. I'm then going to take my nugget, and again, we're just going to build up a nice layer of fur. And then I'm going to go over that with the warm grey free. Okay, back to my uh, Payne's Grey as we blend in here. So you've got some nice darker tones for the grey and the black. Not quite black, but it's darker in tone. I'm using the Payne's Grey and then I'll go over that with my dark sepia. So hopefully you can see when it comes to blue mills, you can use so many different shades of your greys just to create the fur. You want to get those darker patches in first and then come in and build up the tones in the dark fur. And I'm just going to add in very lightly some darker strands of fur and then go over that with a warm grey too. And then I'm going to take my uh, copper, again using the copper to help create some nice grey tones, following the fur direction. And I'm going to do the same with the gold. And then I'm taking my uh, cold grey one and I'm going to use quite hard pressure now with the cold grey one to come over the top here. Now I am again going to be using that slice tool but not just yet. I want to get some of the colours in, um, I want to get some of that tan fur in as we build it all up. So building up this tanned fur area, I'm going to go in once again with the warm grey one and I'm just kind of bringing this warm grey one up, up to where that kind of cheek is it's kind of following that cheek shape Okay, 
looks like. Taking my burnt ochre and this is where it's going to start to blend ever so slightly into that grey area. Okay, and then I want the nugget. This nugget's just going to help it blend. Okay. And then I'm going to take the sanguine light pressure covering this whole area. So hopefully you can see it's starting to really start to look like the shape of this dog's head. really starting to build up that nice fluff as well. Take that nugget again. Oops, that's not my nugget. That was a bit dark. Yeah, nugget. That's why you should always double check your pencils before you start drawing. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to take my uh, Kaput Mortem. Again, I'm just coming in here. So this is like a shadow. This area is all in shadow, which is why we're using these darker tones. Nice light pressure as well. I'm not pressing hard. Okay, and then taking that burnt ochre again. Bit of a harder pressure here. It's going to help start blending, smoothing out that grain. And then the Van Dyke Brown. Followed by the Beige Red. And back over with the Kaput Martin. Just going to take my long grey one again. Okay, so getting the slice tool. I'm just going to start now to bring in details so following the fur direction getting little curly hairs and just blending up into there as well Okay, and then we're going back to that Van Dyke Brown and I'm just going to come in, actually I'm going to take the Nugget and I'm just going in between some of those sliced marks to bring this Nugget in just to help with that blending between the two areas a little more Kaput Mortem Okay, 
and then I'm just going to take my cold grey four and just bring in some little details in here as well, like so. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with um, how this is coming on now. Um, I'm not going to go any further for this part. Um, I want to get the rest of this face done in in the uh, final part. Oh, well, not the final part, in the next part of this tutorial. Um, so rather than going over an hour, we will do the next part. Um, yeah, in the next part. So I will see you all very soon. Any questions, don't forget to let me know. Let me zoom you out so you can see where we are with our Australian Shepherd. So this is what he's looking like at the moment. Almost there. So the next part, we will get this side of the face in. Um, and then obviously the part after that will be the right hand side and then hopefully he will be done so any questions let me know down below subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you all very soon bye guys